Hey, car, you okay to text, man? Hey, Rob. Yeah, sure. I'm taking the subway downtown. No problem using line. What's up? Is your wife Sarah with you? Uh, no. I have to meet up with a friend. I think Sarah's already finished her part-time job. She should be home about now. Okay, got it. So we can continue then. What's up, Rob? You sound kind of serious. Something wrong? Listen carefully. Don't lose your cool or anything. Uh, yeah. Okay. I know how to say this, so I'm just gonna give it to you straight. Sarah's cheating on you. Uh, excuse me? Cheating? The other day, I saw her heading toward a hotel with some guy. They were holding hands. Uh, right. Are you sure? Yeah, sorry, but I had to say something. You're my best friend, after all. I appreciate it, Rob, but actually, I already know. Oh, huh, really? I kind of feel weird telling you this, but I asked this agency to look into it. Uh, a, a private investigator. I had to check it out. I wanted to get a bit more info and, you know, make sure it was true. I was going to call you after that, maybe get your advice and all. Sorry to worry you, man. I see, okay then. Well, that's great. Well, not great, but you know what I mean. At least something is happening. Yeah, so I may be calling on you later to hear my grievances and such. Hope you don't mind. For sure, man. I'm there for you. Thanks, Rob. You don't know how much that means to me. Hey, Carl. Are you busy? Hey, Sarah. What's up? Uh, are you working overtime today by any chance? Why do you ask? Yeah, I was just... I was wondering if we could spend the evening together. You know, and later... Uh, what's this about all of a sudden? It's just that we haven't, you know, it's been a while since we... I mean, we are married. I figured since it's been a while, we could have a little fun tonight, that's all. I, I hate to tell you this, but... Yeah, over time. End of the month and all. Probably be pretty late tonight. Sorry. But I thought you just concluded that big project you were working on. Yeah, that's all done, but some trouble came out of New York office, and I have to deal with it. May take some time. I see. Well then. Oh, sorry, Sarah. My boss is calling me. Better get back to work. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Hey, Rob, you there? Hey, man, we need to talk. I'm getting my shivers up my spine. I can't take this. Uh, what are you talking about, buddy? She just called and you know what she said? She was suggesting we sleep together tonight. Can you believe it? Really? You're talking about your wife, right? Uh, of course. I mean, I found out she's seen some new guy, probably sleeping with him, no doubt, and she asked me if I want to, you know, do the deed tonight. Really? <sighs> Makes you sick to my stomach. Calm down, Carl. Kind of weird asking you this, but how long has it been since you guys last, you know, together? <sighs> We're not sure. I was pretty busy with the project at work. I guess it must have been like four or five months. So when she said she wanted to, you know, do the deed, gave me the creeps. Take it easy, Carl. Don't get all worked up, man. You know what? This might mean that Sarah is pregnant with this guy's kid. Uh, why would you think that? Maybe she's thinking she could raise as a kid of yours. You never know unless you do DNA tests, of course. Maybe that's your little ploy. Yeah, you might be onto something there, Rob. Mind you, this is all just an assumption. If I've upset you, I'm sorry. No, 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 no problem. Now that you say that, I get what you mean, and I don't feel so bad about it anymore. Yeah, really? Yeah, you always gave it to me straight. I need that now. Clear my head. Thanks. I'll ask the investigation agency to put that little fact in their search. Yeah, might be a good idea. You never know. All right, Rob. Thanks for that, man. If there's anything that you notice, let me know. For sure. That's what I'm here for. Hey, Carl. You there? I can't stand this any longer. It's been one week that we've been apart. I'm getting kind of lonely. Come on. Tonight for sure, right? Sorry, have to stay overnight tonight. Huh? Seriously? Yeah, that trouble we had last week, it's still not resolved. Can't get home until you work something out. Sorry. Even my boss is in a panic. This could even bring down the company. We just can't seem to come to an agreement. I, I have no option but to stay as long as needed and work this problem out. Really? Alright. I guess there's nothing you can... 
Sorry, gotta go. Gotta get to the root of the problem. Oh, yeah. Right. Hey, Rob, you there? I got the investigation report back from the agency. Oh, yeah? What's it say? Apparently, they have a recording of Sarah talking to her boyfriend about her being pregnant. The content seems to be a conversation they're having on how they could force the kid on me, making me to be the father. You were right, it seems. The way she was always urging me to come home early for a late night romp, it was all part of the plan. Actually, she's like trying to lure me in almost every night. I've been making up various reasons for not coming home. Working overtime, flying to New York, all that. I can see she's really getting frustrated that her little scheme isn't working out. I see, yeah. Gotta do something about it soon. You're not gonna be able to hold it off forever. So, what are you gonna do going forward? Well, actually, I went to see my in-laws yesterday. Oh yeah, did you tell them about this? Yeah, I showed them all the evidence and told them all I know about the situation. That's when they made a suggestion. Uh, what suggestion? Well, they suggested that I completely ignore her until the child is born. Uh, you're just gonna ignore her? For what, like six months? Yeah, they said that knowing Sarah's character, if she finds out that I know, she may have to take matters into her own hands. You know, take drastic measures. Uh, you think? Yeah, I mean, to them, the child will be their first grandchild. They've been waiting a long time to see their grandchild. It's not the child's fault after all, right? They said they don't want to jeopardize a precious life. Yeah, I can understand how they feel. But they know I don't want to be with her until then, so... I made up the story where I had to go off on a business trip to handle an urgent matter in New York, which would probably take months to resolve. As for Sarah, I'll have her stay with her folks until I can resolve things in New York. I see, yeah. Oh no, I just got a line message from Sarah. Gotta go. Probably wants you to come home tonight for sure. You know what? I'll keep you in the loop, Rob. Thanks for everything. Alrighty, take care. Hey Carl, what is this? Are you avoiding me? Don't tell me you're going to be late again tonight. You have to come home tonight. We're sharing a bed. I won't take no for an answer this time, Carl. I'm really sorry, Sarah. I have to go on an urgent trip to New York. That problem just won't go away. Excuse me? This is a joke, right? No, no joke. The problem we had since last week, you remember well. It just got worse. Can't do anything from here, so I've been asked to handle it personally, so... I'm off to New York to deal with it in person. I probably won't be back for a few months. Huh? A few months? Seriously? Yeah, I was shocked too. I talked to your mom and dad about it and they suggested that you come and stay with them while I'm gone. What do you say? Huh? You spoke to my folks already. Yeah, I happened to call them. You know, about the Christmas gathering and we got to talking and I mentioned my trip and they offered to have you stay with them. I think it's a good idea, don't you? Oh, yeah, but this is all kind of weird. Ah, uh, Carl, are you there? I feel a little uneasy telling you this, but you think I'm pregnant. Actually, I'm glad I came back home to my folks' place. <laughs> I was trying to remember when we actually, you know, did it. We probably did it one night after a hard day's work. You were half asleep, as I recall. <laughs> anyway, are you still working on that problem? Anyway, contact me as soon as you're free. Dad? Hey, Carl, why don't you contact me? Your baby is really growing inside of me. Healthy as ever. Please send me a message when you have time. I feel so... No, we feel so lonely without you. Carl, are you there? Why do you keep ignoring me? What's up? You haven't even contacted me once and you call yourself a father? Please, a little message will do. I'm glad I was able to come to my folks' place so I can handle being alone, but come on. You're going to be a father. This is for the rest of your life. I think it would be a good idea to see me with child as much as possible. You'll regret it later.
Whoa, it's getting pretty unbearable. I can't take it anymore, Rob. Hey, Carl, what's so unbearable? It's about Sarah. Yeah, right. Go ahead, let's hear it. Sorry, had to talk to somebody. Thanks for being here for me, man. She contacted me saying I should have a little more awareness that I'm going to be a father. Can you believe it? Oh, yeah? Man, that must be hard on you. I wonder if she's still seeing this guy. She's been at your folks' place this whole time, right? No, it doesn't look like it. I'm not sure if it's because she was at her folks' place who kept a close eye on her, but it looks like they broke up. Which puts me in a tougher spot. Now she's determined to make me the father. Oh, man. Women can be pretty intimidating. Isn't she getting suspicious that you're completely ignoring her? Nah, her folks are in on it and they're handling it well. You know, telling her that I'm busy with work and all. Her father's company is a major client of ours, so he's able to back me up, making up all kinds of stories to keep her satisfied. <laughs> hey Carl, how are ya? My belly is huge now. I wish you could see it. And you have to feel the baby moving around inside. It's fantastic. I know you're busy and Dad explained the situation to me, but I sure would like to talk to you, even a little. Even a short text message at least. Oh, yeah. Maybe you didn't want to know, but I can't keep it to myself anymore. It's a boy! I remember you saying you'd love to play baseball with him if we had a boy. Remember that? Your wish has come true! Bet you can't wait to see him. I just hope this whole problem you're dealing with in New York gets resolved. Carl, you there? The big day is almost here. Boy! My tummy is huge. It's hard just getting around. Really wish you were here, Carl. I mean, emotionally. It would be such a huge relief if you were by my side. You know, I really want to know. You are going to be by my side when the day comes, right? You do want to see your son when he comes into this world. I mean, what father wouldn't? Could you just tell me if you'll be here or not? I haven't been able to see you once while I've been pregnant, so I hope you can at least make it to the most important day of our lives. Maybe seeing your son being born will really wake you up. You'll finally come to the realization that you're dad. Carl, what is this? You're asking for compensation right after I give birth? What is this? Hey, Sarah. It's been a while, hasn't it? Carl, finally! Where the hell have you been? And what the hell is this about compensation? For what? First off, congratulations on your baby. Uh, yeah, well... But you know what? I'm afraid I really can't be a father. Huh? What are you talking about? Come on, Sarah. Ask yourself why I demanded compensation. I'm sure you know full well. I was aware that you were cheating on me way before you got pregnant. So there's no use denying it, Sarah. I'm perfectly aware that the kid, the little boy you're probably holding in your arms right now, that he's this guy's kid and not mine. In addition, I had your boyfriend pay me for wrecking our marriage, just so you know. You're not serious. So the past seven months, you... For me, it was sort of preparation for getting a divorce, but regarding the circumstances of why you're even in this situation and why we pretended we didn't know, ask your mom and dad about that, they'll explain. All I did was, as your dad told me, and get ready for divorce. That's all. Divorce? What are you talking about? Our child has just been born. Come on, Carl, you can't be serious. This is not right. You can't do this. Please, don't make him a fatherless child. Please, Carl. Shouldn't you be telling that to the guy you had an affair with, not me? I'm not the father. Ugh, but... I also got your father's support for declaring the child is not mine but I have no relation to him. Declare what? Submit official papers proving that I am not the father of this child. Huh? No, no, please don't do that. I already broke off with the guy. You have to be the father or else. Don't tell me you want to bring up your boyfriend's son, do you? Come on, Sarah, I can't do that. But that's the only option I have. I can't be a single mom. You have to help me, Carl. Are you really going to abandon the child your wife gave birth to? Can you really do that? 
Don't you even have a shred of compassion in you, Carl? You can't do this. Have some pity, for God's sake. Uh, Sarah, I know the child is not guilty of anything. He's completely innocent, but... Then why? I have no obligation to bring him up. It's not my responsibility. Simple as that. Then what the hell am I going to do? We're complete strangers now. I'm not related at all to the baby of yours. There is no use asking me. Your dad has all the papers for the divorce, so I urge you to sign it and I'll be out of your life for good. After you pay the compensation amount, I'll submit the papers. So sign it. Let's get this over with once and for all. <sighs> please, Carl. Anything else, please go through my lawyer. Okay then, that's about it. Goodbye, Sarah. During the eight months until she gave birth, her father apparently made all the necessary preparations. First off, the divorce went through without a hitch, and her parents paid me the compensation amount on her behalf. I was, able to I was able to receive the amount in full. As for the baby, Sarah's younger sister and brother-in-law took the now single mom in, and they are bringing him up as their own. Maybe it was because all the people around her took too much care of her. Sarah took advantage of this easy situation and ended up lounging around the house, not working and even going out until the wee hours of the night drinking with her friends, and letting her younger sister take care of her son. One day, she came back from one of her vacations. She found the house empty. All there was left was a note on the kitchen table telling her the family had abandoned her and taken her son. She was no longer part of the family. As for her son, she had long signed over custody to her sister and brother-in-law. Realizing that she was no longer wanted and that she lost everything, she disappeared into the night, never to be seen again. Hey, Alan. Everything good over there? Hey, Grace. What's up? Your friend's wedding ceremony. How's it go? Yeah. It was really beautiful. Yeah? Must have been nice. Hey, did you get some photos of the bride? Love to see them. Yeah, I snapped a few. Why? Emma's bugging me to show her. Oh, yeah. Emma. Her life ambition is to be a bride. Kinda makes poor old dad a little sad, though. Come on, she's only five years old for Pete's sake, lol. Yeah, I got all the photos on my smartphone. I'll show them to you when I get home. Okay, Emma says she's looking forward to them. I'm headed over to the after-wedding party now. You'll probably be meeting up with a bunch of old friends, so don't drink too much. Yeah, got it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh yeah, and you're coming home Tuesday night, right? You're staying a couple of nights, right? A good chance to get reacquainted with old friends? Yep. For now, no change of plans. That's why I took time off from work. Behave yourself. Don't drink too much and go off the rails. No worries! <laughs> okay then, the party's starting pretty soon. Better go! Yeah, right. Have fun. Hey, Grace. What's up? Do you have some time to talk? Hey, Nora. Been a while. The last I talked to you was at the alumni party, like two years ago, wasn't it? Was that two years ago? Seems like yesterday. I heard you were in Europe. Are you back? Yeah, it was my youngest sister's wedding, so my husband and I came back to attend the ceremony. I'm at my folks' place in San Jose. Huh? Your youngest sister is still about 20, right? She's already getting married, huh? Yeah, I was a bit worried at first, but her husband is 10 years older. But my other sister's husband happens to know the groom. He vouched for him, so with that, my folks gave her their blessings. I see. Anyways, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Oh, that reminds me. My husband also attended a wedding near San Jose yesterday. I thought so. Huh? Got to talking forgot about what I lied you about. Well, evidently, my sister's husband, the groom, knows your husband. Huh? Seriously? The wedding was at the K Hotel in downtown San Jose, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. His name was on the groom's invitation list, so it wasn't my mistake. 
Wow, what a coincidence. Yeah, if I had known beforehand, I would have said hello. I was going to check if I was right at the after wedding party, but right after the wedding, he apparently said he had other plans and left right away. Huh? He left right after the wedding? Huh? He seemed pretty excited about attending the after party. Really? Is that what he said? He didn't contact me to say he had an emergency or anything. Wonder what happened. Alan's friends were at the party, weren't they? Yeah, as far as I know, all his old friends were there. He told me he was going to stay until Tuesday and that he was going to be having fun with his old buddies. Mmm, seems a wee bit suspicious, don't you think? Uh, I don't know about that. No need to jump to conclusions. Probably just forgot to contact me, that's all. My sister and her husband are here. Want me to ask them? Uh, yeah, okay. Just in case, could you ask them? Okay then, hold on a second. Sorry to keep you waiting. How'd it go? Yeah, well, where do I start? According to my sister's husband, Alan hadn't planned to attend the after wedding party and had no plans to stay over until Tuesday. Really? That can't be right. Also, my sister said something kind of strange. Strange? Yeah, but could you give me a little time? I want to verify what she said. She's calling around to make sure. Yeah, well, okay. Sorry, didn't intend to stir up trouble or anything. It's not your fault, Nora. You have nothing to apologize for. Well, I hope it's just all a misunderstanding. I'll get back to you at about 3 o'clock, okay? Sorry to put you through all this hassle. I'll be waiting to hear back from you. Fun! Really had a wild time with my buddies. Oh, you're back. Hey, just got to the front door. Hey, what is this? The key doesn't fit. Oh, that. I canceled the apartment lease, so I suppose the landlord changed the locks. Huh? Canceled the lease? Yeah, that's right. Me and Emma, we don't live there anymore. Come on. Quit screwing around! I'm tired! Was there some reason to move out? Boy oh boy, getting all the stuff moved out was a real chore yesterday. But I'm glad we leased out the apartment in my name. And, about your stuff, I sent them off to your parents' place. What the hell is going on? What happened? Yeah, well, where to start? I haven't really worked it all out in my head yet. Come on! Out with it! Okay, then, let's begin with... You know that the groom from the wedding the other day, right? And you know he has four younger siblings too, right? Huh? Yeah, what about it? The bride is the youngest of two or three sisters too, I think. Yeah, the eldest of the sisters is called Nora. She's a friend from college. Huh? Are you serious? Yeah, and Nora called me the day after the wedding. I was shocked as you are when I knew who she was. Heard she married a foreigner and now lives overseas, right? Nora came to our wedding too, but it was six years ago, so I guess you didn't notice. Oh, really? Too bad I wasn't able to say hello. If I had known, I would have said something. And I guess it was about this time last year. The wedding ceremony for Nora's other sister. Yeah, the groom from that wedding. Like, the groom this time. He's my friend, too. I attended that wedding, too. We all grew up in the Bay Area, but to be so connected... A real coincidence, huh? Wait... Then... Didn't Nora say anything about me last year? She wasn't able to attend last year. Things came up, and she was overseas then, too. Oh. Okay, I get it. But what does that have to do with you guys not coming home? Hmm... Guess you still don't get it. Huh? What are you talking about? But you do know this. They're all three of the sisters had one common friend. Huh? You went to the wedding so that person was obviously invited. Is this about... 
finally starting to see the picture. You see where I'm going with this line of questioning, finally. I was... well... Stella, 20 years old, right? The last year, at that wedding, you seduced her. After that, you continued the relationship, seeing her on a regular basis. And even worse, you said you were single. When did you learn all this? Her little sister heard it through small talk. She mentioned that her boyfriend was also way older than her. What really got the ball rolling was when she showed a photo of herself with you. Huh? Yeah, the photo was like two days ago. When I was talking with Nora, there was this gap in her conversation. Things just didn't mesh. So Nora checked with her sister. We found that you did attend the after wedding party. But instead, you went off on a romantic holiday trip with Stella. I hear you made plans for this little jaunt way in advance. Seem to be having so much fun with your little mistress. You are aware that you're married and have a child. Didn't cross your mind, huh? Hmm, cat got your tongue? Nothing to say, dear? If you got some explanation, let's hear it. Darn it! I'm busted. What can I say? So, that means you confess to your affair? Yeah! I am happy to admit it! Load off my chest! Happy, huh? Yeah! Overjoyed! <laughs> I mean, I divorce you, and I get to marry a beautiful 20-year-old babe! So there. As for custody of Emma, you can have her! I'll live my new life with a beautiful young wife instead of spending the rest of my days with an old hag like you! I'll give you the divorce, so stay away from us! Forever! About this girl, Stella. You were going out with her without telling you were married and had a kid, am I right? Yeah, so what? I get divorced, and it no longer matters! <laughs> Is it really that simple? If you think you've got me back against the wall, you got another thing coming. Stella and I are in love. This is a strong love binding us. This little mishap will not affect us at all. Just a minor irritant. Besides, Stella is head over heels in love with yours truly. Older, more experienced, and handsome to boot. Oh, really? Isn't that what they call delusions of grandeur? Huh? Or is it just something that you had pent up inside you all these years? I never thought you were the type. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Here you go. What's this? As you can see, a photo of you and Stella. Got more where that came from. There's some really obscene ones, too. But deleted those. Felt yucky leaving them in my photo file. What the... Why do you have these photos? Stella was kind enough to send them to me, as evidence of your infidelity. Huh? Stella? Yeah, you guys parted ways during the holiday trip, right? Yeah, she said she had an emergency errand or something. Well, right after that, she got in touch with Nora's younger sister and we arranged a video chat. Had a good long talk with Stella. Huh? She was shocked to hear you were married and had a five-year-old daughter. I told her I would forgive her if she would provide some photos for evidence. She didn't hesitate. Send me a whole slew of compromising photos. Hard for me to look at, BTW. You're not serious! Very serious. About Stella. She said if she knew you were married and had a child, she would not have gone out with you. Even if she was fond of you. She was pretty pissed off that you deceived her. Said she never wanted to see you again. You're making all this BS up! Stella would never say such a thing! She said she made a huge mistake. Better to break it off. Huh? Yeah, told me to tell you that if you were adamant about continuing to see her, she was so pissed that she probably couldn't hold back smacking you right in that big fat nose of yours. Her words, not mine. She was also positive you go ballistic over this and added that if you value your life, stay away from me. Again, her words, not mine. Strong-willed girl for sure. Kinda like her. That's BS! Yeah? I don't know. Her eyes seem dead set to me. Not really my place to say, but that anger, that intensity, really came through watching her in the video chat. She almost seemed possessed. Was... 
Stella... that angry? What do you think? That she would be elated and smiling? Even though you deserve the consequences of your actions, I would listen to her and never see her again. No. No way. The love between us would never crumble. Not for something so minor. Okay, wanna go see her and risk losing an arm and a leg? Uh, but by your expression, maybe even your life. Yeah, well... As for me, I plan to get a huge divorce settlement and child support from you, so better if you stay alive, lol. What? But I'm... If you're bullheaded enough to still go see her, I really recommend that you plead with her to spare your life. Keep it down to ER level injuries. ER level? Well, can't guarantee what she'll do, but I'll pray for you. Oh... My... God... What do I do?! I had contacted both of our folks in advance, and after this conversation, they arrived. They met up with Alan in front of the apartment, standing around in total confusion. Well, needless to say, Alan and I got divorced. We worked out a one-time settlement and child support payments. Alan returned to his parents' place, but after the divorce went through, they eventually kicked him out. All the divorce papers went through without a hitch, and payments were made. Emma and I moved away and kept our address and contact info secret. Since then, all is pretty quiet. As for Alan, the whole sordid affair spread quickly among his co-workers. The stress of all the talk behind his back forced him to eventually retire. Needless to say, his friends heard about his infidelity and didn't want anything to do with him. After quitting his company, he had a hard time finding a new job. Went through his savings in no time. I hear he's doing whatever part-time job is available. He's apparently leading a pretty frugal existence.